the honor I have here today of talking to you about a topic which is sorting for leaders. And I really find that topic amazing because when I first started, I didn't know what a leader was. I just wanted to make some money. Nobody showed me how to do this. Nobody showed me how to do presentations. I had no idea how to go about doing this. And all I did is I went out and I took a lot of action. But with all these years back, looking back, I look at all the top people in the company. When I looked at all the great Circle of Champions members today, and I looked at every single one of them, they all had something in common. They were a leader. Now, what is a leader? In my opinion, a leader is defined by those two words. It's a momentum creator. A momentum creator. What does that mean? You could drop any one of those people anywhere around the world. I don't care where. I don't care if they know somebody or not, and they will they build a booming organization because they will be responsible for creating the momentum. Who would like to become a momentum creator in this business? Who would like to have the ability to go in any country in the world, any city in the world, just slander, not know anybody, and within six months, build a massive empire in that city? Who wants to know how to do that, right? Well, here's what you need to become to become a, a, a momentum creator, a leader. How do you recognize one? Number one, a leader quickly learns how to present and train. And here's what I'll tell you. You don't need to be perfect at it. You don't need to be the best presenter and the best trainer. You just need to learn quickly how to present and train. Start doing it and do it and do it and do it. Keep on doing it and get better at it and talk to a lot of people. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it and the better you presenter you will be. And that's going to help you a lot in building the business. Secondly, leaders constantly work on their attitude. Leaders will never be sitting down thinking, I got it all figured out. They're always reading, they're always listening to tapes, they're always learning, they always want to progress. They always want to become a better person. They work on their personal growth. And that's something that we've heard time and time again this weekend that every one of us need to constantly work on because we never arrive. Third, leaders build relationships with their organization. Mr. Provenzano said it best at the beginning of this weekend. He said, a rep will leave you but a friend will never leave you. When you build your business, it's more important to look at people in the eyes, put your fist down, tell them, I want your future and mine to be together. How can I serve you? How can I help you? That's what's more important. Become their friends, get close to them. That's more important than any technical aspect or anything like that. Next, leaders always share the vision. Leaders always paint a big picture of where this is going to be. They always talk about the services that are coming. Who is excited about energy in Canada and energy coming in the United States? Do you realize the vision you could build with that? I mean, think about it. Everybody you talk to about the business, and you look at them, you say you build a massive team. You're not only going to get paid on phone service. You're not going to get paid on the best technology in the world of video phone service. You're not only going to get paid on that. You're going to get paid. When people flip on the light switch, when people cook, when people take a shower. Man, we're gonna love cold, dark, winter nights. If you can't build vision with that, what are you gonna build vision with? Next leader, constantly promote events. Didn't, Jennifer, didn't we just have an unbelievable training by Jennifer and Darren Dowd about how to promote events? You need to be constantly promoting events all the time, everywhere, at every occasion. And lastly, by far the most important aspect, leaders always go back to phase one. They're always in phase one. And when they get out of phase one, they get back into phase one. And you've heard about phase one over the course of the weekend, but I'm gonna to talk to you about it a little more. Now, do you wanna attract leaders in your organization? Do you want to find people like you, people that want it, people that are here this weekend, people that want to make a difference in people's life? Do you want to find those kind of people? Well, if you want to find those kind of people, you've got to become a leader yourself. Because to attract leaders, you need to become a leader. To sort through people, to find leaders, you need to become a leader. You need to be the example of what you want your people to become. So if you want the people you recruit to become leaders, you need to lead by example. You need to be doing all the different things I just talked about, about what's important for you to be a leader. And the more you do that, the more people are going to want to follow you, emulate you, and become what you want them to become. So start leading by example. Here are the two most important aspects, in my opinion, 
that you need to show on a daily basis for people to want to follow you and become like you, number one, and by far the most important, is your attitude. How do you see this business? Do you see it as a way to make a little bit of extra money? Or do you see it as a way to help generations of people to build total financial independence? Do you see it as that? Do you wake up in the morning thinking, who am I going to recruit? Or who's the lucky person that's going to be in my way today? Do you see it that way? How do you see this business? Do you see yourself winning? Do you see yourself overcoming any obstacle or you don't? When you work on that, what you reflect to people is what they're going to follow. So work on your attitude constantly. Always look to become better because when people look at you and they see you being the positive person, doing the things they need to do, never, never showing fear, never showing doubt, always showing certainty, confidence, and leading people to where they need to go, that's how you attract leaders in your organization. Number two, posture. Here's what posture means. You need to know inside of your mind, inside of your heart, inside of your soul that you have something a million times better than anybody you're talking to, no matter who you're talking to. Whether they have a job, whether they have a business, whether they're in this industry, no matter who you're talking to, you need to know inside of you that what you have is a million times more powerful than what they have. And when you have that confidence, no matter what people tell you, no matter what they tell you about ACN, no matter what they tell you about this business, no matter what they tell you about your abilities, no matter what they tell you about anything, you will be confident and you will know inside of yourself that no matter what people tell you, you will make it. When you portray that certainty, that posture, and you don't let anybody take the dreams away from you, you will attract leaders. So who's ready to have the best attitude and the most posture they've ever had in their life after this weekend? All right, we talked about that, but let's talk about staying in phase one, right? Because you heard about phase one all weekend. Let me clarify what phase one really means. Because every single one of us, and I include myself on a daily basis, we go through four stages in this business. You'll go through four different phases that you won't even realize you're going through, but maybe after today you will. Here's what phase one is. is when you first get started, and you just saw the presentation, and you saw that two, get two, get two, get two, get two, get two, get two, and now you're making $11,000 a month, doing nothing, sitting at home, or drinking a pina colada somewhere in the south. And now you're all excited, and you go home, and you look at your, you know, husband, wife, dog, whoever is living at home with you, right? And you look at them and you say, I married, you married a champion. I'm going to make this big. We're going to make a fortune. And you go out, and you start talking to everybody. You have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know how to invite people. You don't have the right words. You don't know how to ask for customers. You don't know the products. You know nothing. But you recruit a bunch of people just because you're excited. Because you're excited, people are coming into you. So you're inviting people, getting customers, inviting people, getting customers, inviting people, getting customers. And you're recruiting people, and now you're thinking they're all going to do the same thing. That's the creativity phase, or stage one, or phase one. That's when you're out there getting customers and reps, and that's all that matters. But here's what's going to happen. You're going to recruit a few people, and they're not going to do anything. And then you're going to start wondering why they're not doing anything. And now you're going to get into the analyze phase. You're going to start analyzing everything. You analyze the products. You analyze the competition. You analyze the training material. You analyze your upline. You analyze your sideline. You analyze your mother that never loved you and told you you'd never make it. You analyze all the different things in the world. And then you come to the conclusion that the reason why not everything is going the way it is is because you're not managing your team right. And now you fall into the third phase, which is the management phase. Now you're creating new training documents, writing new scripts, showing up to meetings with no guests to help your team. Yeah, now you got a pin, because oftentimes you became an executive team trainer. So now that you're an executive, you don't do the same things as the regular team trainers would do. So you go to the meetings with no guests, strictly to help your team. How can I better help you? Would you like to help me close your guests? What would you like me to do? You look at your downline report seven times a day. 
Let me tell you something. It only updates in the middle of the night. So if you wait for it, you're going to be up all night. You start looking at everything, recreating things, managing everybody, and nothing's happening because everybody's doing what you do. They're analyzing and then they're managing. They're no longer recruiting and getting customers. So now nothing is working. Your downline is dying. And you're looking at this and you're like, oh my God, this doesn't work. And then you fall into the fatal phase, the blaming stage, the blaming stage. Now you blame everybody and everything why you're not making it. It's because of my mother. It's because of my father. It's because of my brother. It's because of my this, my that, my upline, the products. I had a problem with this service, this, that. Any reason you can imagine we've heard, don't worry about it. If you want a reason to quit, we can give you one. We've received thousands and thousands of people that justify why they're quitting ACN. Some of them are great reasons. If you need a better one than yours, don't worry, I'll give you one. But here's what I've never had. I've had people call me, I'm quitting because of this, I'm quitting because of that. But I've never had anybody call me and go, Simon, I'm quitting because I'm a quitter. I quit everything in my life. I quit school, I quit my marriage, I quit my job. I quit everybody, and I'm looking forward to quitting many more things in the future. Signed, quitter. I never got that. Never got that. So here's what you need to do moving forward to become a leader. You need to re realize what stage you're in. You need to realize what you're doing right now. Are you in phase one, or are you in phase two, phase three, or phase four? Or are you like most of us, that for a period of time in our business, we go through all these four phases in one day? You wake up in the morning, this is gonna be the day I'm gonna talk to everybody. I see who's the lucky person that's gonna fall in my way, but because I need to understand how, let me first watch out what the competition is doing today. Let me first analyze the reporting structure and how we could better the downline reporting to make it better. Let me look at my distributor website and make sure that everything is on there before I talk to anybody. And by the end of the day, nothing happened. And now you're blaming yourself. Oh my God, I really stink. I didn't talk to anybody this morning. I thought maybe I'm not gonna make it. Oh my God, I should quit. But no, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna talk to everybody. I'm gonna walk out of here and I'm gonna go do this. And you go through these four phases in one day every day. Realize what phase you're in. And to be a leader, you need to be in phase one all the time, acquiring customers and getting representatives. How do you acquire customers? By the people who do not become reps. All the time, show the plan. Now, what do you need to do to be in phase one all the time? It's one word and one word only. There's no secret. The word is work. You need to work. What is work? Because people get confused. What is the definition of work? Is it reading up on more materials? Is it this? No, that's necessary. You need to do it. It's sharpening the ax time. That's what it is. But the real work is only three things. Number one, three-way meetings. When you're sitting with somebody else that you're coaching at the same time and showing the business to someone. So you're showing the business to a prospect. Somebody's watching you to learn. Number two, private business receptions. Didn't Patrick Mazur do an unbelievable job to explain to you how to have a private business reception at home? I mean, think about it. Private business receptions all the time. Lastly, invitations to the meeting. Just invite people to the BOM all the time. Those are the things that you do that count for phase one. All the rest does not. So if you want to measure your progress in the business, the only thing you should measure all the time is the number of prospects you are exposing the business to in your open line organization. Track your open line, look at it, those do not count for work hours, and inside of your work hours, show the business to an unlimited number of people in your open line. That's how you progress in this business. Here's the most important skill you need to acquire while you're doing this as a leader because it could get tough on your mind. So you need to acquire the skill to sort for leaders of sorting. You're gonna go through a lot of different kind of people. You gotta accept that and have fun with it. You see, I've always seen this business in a very simple fashion. My mind is very simple. I don't understand complicated things. I only understand simple things. I show it to a lot of people and I don't care about what they say. I move on to the next if they don't like it. But here's the deal. You're gonna run in through crazy stories. You're gonna run into things that I promise you, you will be the only one that will believe 
you'll believe that you're the only one that's ever went through that. You're going to go through some obstacles that you think nobody else has gone through. You're going to think that you've, nobody else has ever been tested the way you're going to be tested while you're building this business. And the reason why is very simple. Because everybody in this room will have a different career in this business. Everybody. Some will be very lucky. I know a guy in this business that only recruited two representatives. He got started, he recruited two people. First one was Simon Turkan and Jonathan Desiel that have a team of tens and tens of thousands of customers all over the world and that were a circle of champions members. Secondly, we did, he recruited Matthew Lamontagne and Gabriela Valenzo, who are a circle of champions members with tens and tens of thousands of customers all over the world. He got two reps, those are the two he found. Do you think this guy's lucky? He never even got a third leg done. He found two, that's it. I know there's some other people like me that the first 19 reps I recruited, the first 19, never found another rep. Don't you feel better about your business now? I, I recruited 19, none of them found somebody else. Most of them didn't even get qualified. Think about it. 19 reps that I found, not level two, I found none of them got another rep. Would you feel good at that point? So the important part is to understand that you're going to show the business, some will, some won't. And you're also going to recruit people, some will, some won't. And you need to sort. And because it's going to be different than everybody, I love comparing this business to a deck of cards. <laughs> Nobody's going to get the same thing because you shuffle it. But here's what it's going to look like when you leave this room. You're going to invite some people and you're going to run into some different stories. The first person you're going to talk to is going to be the nine. The nine, you're going to invite them, and they're not going to show up. Invite them again, and they're not going to show up. You're going to invite them a third time, they're going to come up with a better excuse. The fourth time you're going to invite, he's not going to show up. By the 16th time you invite the nine, you realize it's a nine, it's not an ace, and you take that person and you throw it away. That's what you're going to have to run into. Everything I'm going to tell you here are things that happened to me. The second person you're going to show this to, the six. It's going to look at you after the presentation and go, it's a pyramid, it's one of those, I'm not going to do this, you're going to jail. <laughs> That's a person like Nathan Goldberg says that you're going to look at and go, obviously it's a pyramid, obviously it's a scam, Donald Trump is in on the scam, all these magazines are in on the scam, 20 governments are in on the scam, attorney generals are in on the scam, you're the only one that's not in on the scam and you're going to throw that person away. The next person you're going to talk to is the four. At the end of the presentation, they're going to go, this is great, but I'm only going to do it when you have cell phones. And when we've launched cell phones, I called up that person again. He said, this is great, but I'm only going to do it once you have internet. And when you launch internet and you call that person, you go, now we have internet, they'll go, this is great, but I'm only going to do it when we have TV. I'm only going to do it when we have energy. I'm only going to do it when the extraterrestrial or whatever is going to come here and show me. Get that person away from you. They're never going to do it. Go through the next person. The next person you're going to talk to is the three. Oh, I remember the three. He was one of the first people I showed this to. One of my best friends in the world. His name was Hai. His name is still Hai, but his name is Hai H-Y. No joke, he's Armenian. If there's Armenians in the house, they know what Hai is. It's an Armenian name, it's H-Y. I guess we have a couple of Armenians. So every time I see him, I go, hi, hi, whatever. But you know, he's a buddy of mine, right? <laughs> so he's one of the first people I show this to. I sit down with him. I'm all excited. I found a way to get rich. I draw a circle. I go, this is you. And before I say the name of the company, before I say anything, he takes his hand, he slams it on the table, and he goes, don't do this. And I go, don't do what? You don't even know what it is. He goes, yeah, I do. My aunt did something like this. She lost $50,000. I'm naive. I'm like, what'd she do? Sign up a thousand times? What'd she do? Like, I, <laughs> Get that person away. The next person you're going to talk to is the five. The five is the funniest one. You finish and he goes, this is wrong. Deregulation does not exist. I don't believe in it. Guys, I got all those people before. The number two now. The number two is funny. The number two comes to the meeting, he looks at you, and he goes at the end, he goes, you know what? I'm going to make you rich. I know everyone in California. And you find out that nobody knows them. 
I heard Mr. Provenzano say that one time. It's absolutely right. I've gone through it so many times in my business. The next person, oh, I love this one, number four. That's one of the first people I showed the business to, one of my best friends. Invited them to a meeting that I did, a PBR, one of my first PBRs. I had no idea what I was doing. I was drawing circles on a big screen, right? And I'm explaining to the 20 people that are there how the business works. Some people were standing and leaving in the middle. But this guy, one of my best friends, at the end, he ran to the front. He goes, I'm so excited. We're going to be rich. We're going to do this together. And I was so happy because finally I had one of my best friends that wanted to do that with me. So he said, call me tomorrow. We're going to start. The next day, I'm driving around in my dad's Sunfire because I didn't want to drive my Chevette because I didn't want to look broke. I had a Sunfire four-door 1996. It was my dad's, right? And I'm using my dad's cell phone because I didn't have one when I was 19. And the phone rings, and I'm sure it's him. But when I pick up the phone, it's not him. It's his mother. She goes, Simon? I go, yes. Who's this? She goes, it's Denise. Denise Belanger. Whatever, it's his mother, right? I go, yeah, hey, well, how are you, Denise? She goes, not good. You sent my son to a meeting last night. And I go, yeah, absolutely. Don't you want to do it too? You know, what's up, you know? And she goes, no, I don't want him to do it, and I don't want to do it, and I hate it, and I don't want anybody to have anything to do with it. I go, why? She goes, because I did my research. I go, really, you did your research? What did you find out? Because I didn't do mine, right? <laughs> she goes, I found out that less than 1% of people who do network marketing ever become millionaires. And I'm listening to this, I'm like, are you serious? You can make a million dollars doing this? <laughs> Get her out of the way. Get her out of the way. It's funny how people see this. The next one is funny. It's the six, right? The six comes to the meeting. At the end of the meeting, he looks at you and goes, this is awesome, but check this out. I'm from Zimbabwe, and my brother's best friend is the cousin of the uncle of the king of Zimbabwe. And I want to launch Zimbabwe, so can we launch Zimbabwe together? Because if we do, I'm going to do this. If not, wait for Zimbabwe, my friend. The next person you talk, I've witnessed all those people. Next is the Joker. Oh, the Joker. The Joker. He calls you up and he says, I heard you're an ACN. And you go, yeah. He goes, I want to sign up. I'm a professional network marketer. Come to my house. I'm going to show you what I know. And you'll show me what it is. And we'll do this together because I know that you're serious about it. And you're all excited. I remember when this happened to me. And you drive two hours, knock on the door. The guy answers all happy, goes, welcome. Walk into the house and you see magical juice and lotions and potions and toothpaste on his table. And he goes, let me show you a real deal, right? That's the Joker. <laughs> Unbelievable. Next person you talk to is the seven of hearts. You bring them to a meeting and they don't show up. Next person, you see, most people would have quit by then. You wonder why you don't find leaders. You wonder why you're not booming. Because you spoke to two people. And at the end, you, you, you're so mad that you call your upline and you go, I spoke to everybody I know, nobody wants to do this. All two people? That's what most people do. They're not willing to go through all the yes and the no's and the other thing. The next person is the seven, comes to the meeting, signs up on the spot, put his credit card number. But the credit card is declined. You call back the next day and you say, hey, your credit card got, got declined. He goes, no, there's no problem with my card. It's got to be ACN's fault. So you process it again, decline. Process another one, decline. And he's convinced that it's ACN's fault why his credit card's not going through when the reality is he needs ACN more than that machine does, right? So get that person away. Next person you meet is the Jack. Oh, the Jack's not bad, gets into the business, becomes an executive team trainer, does a team cab of two grand, and for some reason, he decides to quit. He thought that was the entire business. Get rid of that person. The next person you're talking to is the 10. Some of you are bored. You're like, when's the next subject coming up? Imagine when you're really going to live through that. Because that is what the business is. In our group, we have something that we laugh about. We call each other every day. And you know, you don't know what? I met the six of spades today. Let me tell you who the six of spades is, right? Because we got all these stories going on all the time. All these people giving us crazy reasons why they have to. I remember the 10. I drove three hours to show him the business, sit down with him in a coffee shop. He was all excited. He's asking questions. I stayed three hours with him. At the end of all the greatest questions I ever heard, he looks at me, he goes, I have come to the conclusion that this is a, the greatest way to get rich. I'm like, awesome, you're ready to start? 
He goes, no, I'm a communist. I just wanted to analyze all of this, right? I got that guy too. The next person is the queen. She comes into the business, becomes an ETL. You're all happy. You have somebody great, but it's not the ace that you're looking for. It's not one of the TCs that's going to make you a real RVP four star where you have four legs that are booming, that are making you money, which are the four aces that you need to find. So you keep on going and you land the five. I remember the five because the five was the worst experience I've ever had. The one that got me the closest to quitting. This is a guy in New Brunswick. Anybody know where New Brunswick is? It's far from Montreal. At the time, I'm driving a Chevette, 1987. And I got to drive to New Brunswick. It was like a 16-hour drive because it was a Chevette. And I had to go see this guy who told me on the phone he already had 20 points and 60 reps ready to sign up. And at the time, I was broke. So it's finally a breakthrough I was waiting for. So I get into my car and I start driving. I got 16 hours to go. Radio's a little broken, but I got some music. It's cheer up music. Something else was broken in the car. I don't know what it is, but a guy who knows cards told me, you gotta put the heating to the maximum or it will explode. So I put the heating on in the middle of July. I'm sweating bullets, but I don't care. It's not hot. I'm happy. I'm chanting the music. I'm driving to Moncton, New Brunswick. I get over there, Hotel Beau Séjour, Main Street. Go to the front desk, where's the meeting? Sir, we don't have a meeting booked. Do I have the right address? Yes, I do. Let me call up the guy, maybe I'm in the wrong place. Phone rang, he never answered. Not only did he, he didn't have 60 reps and 20 points, he never answered my phone call. To this day, I don't know who this guy is. I gotta tell you, this was the moment I was the closest to quit. This was the moment where everything was on the line. Do I keep on going or do I stop? Do I give up or do I make it happen? So I get into my car, driving back to Montreal. I gotta tell you, it was a lot hotter at that point. <laughs> now I'm feeling the heat. I got into it. I put the music, the sad music, you know, like, my dog died, my sister went to hell, you know, that kind of music, right? I'm listening to this, getting into it, telling to myself, well, do I quit? Do I give this over? Is this ever gonna work? And I don't know why, but something, some rage came inside of me. And it's like, everybody that told me this was not gonna work would be right. Everybody told me that I would not make it would be right. My dad will be able to laugh at me for the rest of my life. So instead of throwing this away, I keep the five because it was the biggest obstacle I've ever had. And that obstacle is the reason why I'm here today on this stage, being able to share with you these stories. So when you run into that obstacle, keep in mind, you need your five. You need your person that you're going to be able to talk about that made you or broke you. Because that's what's going to make you stronger. But you're still looking for the aces. And now you find, you're falling a nine. You're all excited because he comes in, he signs up like 20 reps. But he never gets qualified. Even though you told him at every training he needed to get qualified. And then he calls you and he goes, ACM doesn't work. I didn't make any money. I signed up 20 people. I didn't make any money. Buddy, didn't you listen at the training? You need to be qualified. You need to be an ETT. No, you gotta give me my money. Ah, get out of the way. <laughs> Next you fall on the Joker. It's the other guy's brother. He's involved in the new revolutionary deal, the new technology that's gonna change the world. It's not out yet, but watch out when it is. It's gonna destroy ACN and all telecommunications companies. Get out of here. And now, oftentimes after the worst Joker, you fall on the ace. The person you've been looking for. This becomes team coordinator. He becomes regional vice president. She becomes your best friend in the world, like a family member. You're gonna go on trips together. You're gonna go around the world. She's gonna be a friend of the future and not a friend of the past. That's who this person is in your life, right? Some people stop there. They're like, I got one, I gotta stop right here. I'm doing good. I got a dream home paid for the rest of my life doing nothing every day because I landed a player. I landed somebody that I'm going to make all this money on. I'm done. But anybody want to make more money than that? Well, you got to keep on going. And look at that. The next one is also an ace. What a coincidence. Oftentimes, the second person you talk to in the same day or in the next day is an ace. Two of the regional vice presidents in our downline, Gaetan Grimard and Francis Jobé, signed up the same day at a moment when I was struggling for the longest time. It all happened in one day. Because I kept on going through the cards. 
So you're going to keep on going or you're going to give up? You're going to keep on going or you're going to give up? Because the next one's going to try to laugh at you. He's going to tell you, I'm in, come and train me. You drive a few hours, you get to his house, all the lights are on. You ring the doorbell, all the lights are off. <laughs> Next guy tells me, my phone service doesn't work. Oh, there's a problem. He doesn't understand there could be a problem. Get rid of him. The next one, and I'll, I'll be done with this one. I got to tell you about this one. Because I thought, I got a thought, I, the, the seven. I thought that once you make a lot of money, you're not going to run into all these people. That they'll be like, oh, you make a lot of money, so I'm going to listen to you. I want to do what you're doing. I thought there would be no more negative people. So this is the first time, and I got to tell you, what I'm about to say is not representative of everybody, right? It depends on the efforts you're going to put. But this is the first time in my life I was going to make over $100,000 for one month. And I was freaking out. Freaking out. I'm a normal guy. You give me that kind of stuff. Ah! You know, like, I was like are you kidding me? So I got this weekly check. It's like, you know, very good, right? And I'm telling myself, I'm not going to put this one in the machine because I got a rep for sure. So I go to the teller. I take the check out of my pocket. I unwrinkle it. Sign it in the back, put the account number, twist it. The amount is right there in the front. It says ACN weekly. I look at the person and I'm like, waiting for a question. Here's the question I got. Is this ACN? Yeah. Is this the phone thing? Yeah. Can you believe somebody tried to scam me into paying 500 bucks to join this thing? <laughs> Folks, no matter how much money you make, the sevens are still there. It never goes away. Question is, are you going to go through people? The most important question you're ever going to go through to wrap this up is who do you know? Every person you show this to, no matter if they're an ace, a three, a two, who do you know? Get to their people, to their people, to their people. And as you show the business to people, keep a book of no's. I did this at the beginning, made me a fortune. Everybody that said no, everybody that said maybe, I wrote down their name and number. 90 days later, I'd call them. Hey, how are you doing? Every one of them always said the same thing. How's your phone thing? Now it's also an electricity thing. And when they told me that, every single time, I said, not bad, I'm doing pretty good this month. How are you? How are you? How are you? And the first 60 people I ever wrote down on the list in 1999, every single one of them to this day has signed up because of the fact that I called them back and called them back and called them back, but created my story. So you're gonna have the vision right from the beginning. The vision of your story. The vision you're gonna make it. The vision of this company. Are you a visionary? Yes or no? Because if you are, you got to know what's going to happen. If you are, you heard what the winner said. If this company invests in new technologies, if the owners invest in new technologies, and you know that we're going to have a phone more technologically advanced than anything that is out there with the best softwares in the world, you know we're going to have a product that WorldGate is going to deliver, and this company is giving ACN that product, well, you got to put two and two together, be a visionary, put your money where your mouth is, put your, your head where your mouth is, right? And think about where the future is going. Are you going to put some effort? Are you going to make this happen? Are you going to build your dreams? Yes or no? That's what you got to think about. Have a good day, folks.